Blog Talk Radio. in my bones. The prophet Jeremiah said that if I try not to share the good news of this gospel message from God, I fool around and hurt myself. It'll be like fire shut up in my bones. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to Fire, the gospel experience that is dedicated to honoring the true and only living creator, God. Now, right now, beloveds, is the time to let our minds, bodies, and souls be renewed and refreshed in our relationship with our great, wonderful, and magnificent God, our Father. And words can never fully express our gratitude and sense of appreciation joy for his precious, beautiful son, our Prince of Peace. He is our wonderful Messiah, Savior, and Redeemer, none other than Jesus the Christ, right here on this fire gospel experience. Jesus the Christ is unashamedly, unequivocally, and unapologetically declared to be the only Redeemer. No, there is no other Redeemer. He's the only acceptable Lamb of God. He is the only chosen one with the keys of life, death, hell, the grave, 
into our beautiful eternal life, which starts right here, right now, when we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus that he is the Messiah and that God raised him from the dead. That's when eternal life starts. Not when we float our way up to heaven on a pink cloud. No, right here, right now on this earth, and we receive the wonderful benefits that comes with eternal life. Eternal fellowship with God our Father. God is our only hope. Jesus is the light of the world that we are living in, in this lost, dark, and dying world. Good news is that Jesus is alive. Blessings again to each and every one of you beautiful souls. I am your purpose and power-driven host, Ron E. Jefferson. And I'm here to bring you the most uplifting spiritual soul inspiration as well as some of the most anointed gospel music that has ever been made and ever been played. I got proof. Just stay right where you are. You'll see for yourself. Fire! The gospel experience will light, ignite, and say the flames that's in your spirit, man, woman, boy, or girl, so that you can be that victorious believer. Yes, Lord, in Jesus Christ. But you got to be in Jesus Christ. You can't be standing around on the fringes of those faith and belief, talk about, I see you, I feel you, I smell you. No, you got to come on in and receive Jesus with your full heart, with your full mind, and bring your body to the church fellowship as well. Because I'm here to tell you, God is a respected person. He's just looking for a humble heart to worship and fellowship with him in spirit and in truth. We will be embracing for your spiritual consideration as well as your sanctified supplement from the book of Acts, the first chapter Verse 11 will be our key scripture verse where the disciples of our Lord Jesus asked regarding the restoration of Israel. The, our Lord Jesus then had to redirect their mind to the great commission that he just gave them of spreading the gospel message to all the nations. Then as they watched our Lord Jesus ascend up into the heavens, Two men dressed in white, angels, had to redirect their minds back to earth and begin the work that our Lord just commissioned. The question is, are we Christians in need of our own redirection? And are we still standing around when souls need to be saved? We're going to be talking about still standing from Acts 111 further on into the broadcast. But I am here to let you know that my special guest is here, amazing gospel artist, so talented, so innovative in her presentation of gospel music. You all are going to be blessed. Y'all are going to be dancing happy. Woman of God, now Yere Thomas is here. She's been here before. She ain't new to this fire, fire, fire gospel thing type form. It's been a while, but I'm bringing back these anointed people of God so that they can revisit their Awesome testimonies with us, as well as bust us with their music ministry. So call a family member, call a friend, a co-worker, a neighbor, whoever Holy Spirit God is putting in your spirit right now to get in touch with so that they can be blessed as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit God. We appreciate all that you do, how you bless us, how you keep us, how you cover us, and how you are about to light the fuse that's going to set the internet as well as the radio airwaves on Holy Ghost sanctified fire, fire, fire. Bless your name, God. We are here to do nothing less than to give you our best and our highest praise. Thank you now. Hallelujah.
Nothing, nothing, nothing shall separate us from his love because we believers are blessed to be in the mighty, powerful, omnipotent, omniscient, eternal hands of the great creator of all things known and unknown. My special guest has just smoothed this fire gospel experience right out just the way I like it. Started it off with the sincerity of praise. And benevolence to our God. Without any further ado, my special guest, you just heard her. You just were blessed in your spirit with that beautiful rendition entitled Romans 8. Singer, songwriter, music artist extraordinaire of gospel music, woman of God, Nanyir Thomas is here on this fire gospel experience. Amen goes right there. Come on in the room, woman of God. Welcome to Fire the Gospel Experience. You got my audience all excited. We are just happy to have you here with us. Woman of God, Nanya Ray Thomas. Bless you. How you doing? You know what? I am well. Thank God. I'm well. <laughs> I'm doing, but regardless of what's going on around me, I'm still blessed. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Say that part right there because we have to grow to a point in our Christian faith where we don't let our own 
circumstances, those things that's around us, as well as our own emotions, those things that are within us, deteriorate, get the best of our faith. We have to grow up and be big boys and big girls, pull our britches up, our spiritual britches up, woman of God, and then just deal with life on life terms as Holy Spirit God blesses us with. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to listening to all this? I'd like for my guests to start from the point where they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Now, if you have a different preference, just tell us a little bit about who you are, Nanny Ray Thomas, as a woman of God. Tell us who you are. My name is Nanny Ray Thomas. I uh, live in Columbus, Ohio with my, my husband and my three adult children. Um, I have been Savior since about the age of four, five, I think, for a set with my parents, my mother, my father, and my sister. Reverend Robert Martin, Evangelist Robert Martin, and my sister, Evangelist Ramona Martin. And um, it wasn't until I was about mid 20s when we moved to Columbus. And I wow. um, just start, started writing, and God gave me music, and I just started writing. Um, and my first single, actually, my first single was um, The Five Ten Called Born. But I didn't release that. Okay. One to the world <laughs> and that was a, uh, something I was going through um, as far as salvation when I accepted Christ um, as my savior I accepted Christ when I was really really young probably about 7 6 or 7 um, and for the most part you know I, like I said I, I grew up singing so I traveled with my parents I was under you know under their wing and covered for a long time mm. And it really wasn't until okay. I went to college, and where, where most of us get a little wild, break out a little bit, get a little bit of freedom. Yeah. And um, I remember going to um, a service. My friend, one of my best friends, best friends I grew up with, uh, with all from middle school. We still I uh, have a connection. I still talk to him every once in a while. Um, he had moved away, and they came. To Town for revival, and his pastor sang. Oh my goodness, it was an old one, those old songs. I think it was like, I love the Lord, He heard my cry. And I don't know, okay, why yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that thing messed me up, and I just started falling. And I was like, Man, you're you know, you've been out here, wow, just acting up, and you know, that's not what's for you. And from that point okay. on, I took it seriously. That's good. Because, you know, mom yeah. and dad can only bring you so far. You have to make that decision for yourself. And that point true. really sticks out in my life when I had to make a decision. Okay, I mm. need to get it together. And from that point on, That's I just right. slowly and, you know, started getting things together and coming back to Christ. So that is when it got mm. real, when I was in my early <laughs> in my early 20s. Amen. Amen. So now at this point, except to Jesus Christ, where did the talent, the desire, and the commitment to sing gospel music hit you? Well, like I said, since I've been singing my whole life, um, and I sing quartet. I sing, I sing quartet music. My dad played the guitar, my mom sang lead, and my dad sang um, tenor. My sister played drums, she okay. sang alto, and I was the youngest, wow. and I just sang soprano. Um, I would lead a, a couple times, and my sister would lead a little bit, but my mom was the main lead of the group. And when I tell mm -hmm. you, uh, my parents took it seriously, I mean, they took it seriously. When 8 o'clock okay. uh, Wednesday <laughs> was practice, 8 o'clock Wednesday was practice. I don't care if you got homework. Wow. You knew we had homework when you came home. I don't care. Right, <laughs> right. Was very, <laughs> they, they made us take it serious. It was not playing around. They let it, They instilled in us that worship. This ministry was serious. We're not playing around with God. And that's where mm, I love um, it. The, the cultivation for the gift came. Um, my parents, they... You know, and I don't even remember the story. Um, they told me they were trying to teach a song to my sister, and I just typed up and said, I can sing it. And then I started singing it. And they, I guess at that time, they really didn't know. So they just pushed me out there, and I started leading songs and just 
and being a soprano my Amen. whole life, but that work ethic Amen. and that dedication came from my parents. My father, uh, uh, Reverend uh, Robert Martin, and my mom, Angelus Barbara Martin. Amen. Amen. Uh, we certainly want to acknowledge and give uh, credit and praise to your parents, the pastor, Reverend, your father, and the first lady, woman of God, the wife, and your mother as well. We always thank God for those godly parents that embraced us and led us to accept Jesus Christ on our own. I appreciate the fact that you are able to share with us the intimate family because a lot of us Christian believers, unfortunately, may not have had the visit of a full structured family. I never knew my father. He walked out on me when I was an infant child because I have an older brother with a different father that he did not want to be a part of the family unless my mother was willing to put my older brother up for adoption, which is totally ridiculous and totally insensitive to ask a mother to separate herself from her child <laughs> that she labored, that she carried, that she birthed just to be with some Negro man. I'm sorry, but I don't blame my mama none whatsoever. But I appreciate the fact that you uh, gave credit to strong family structures with Christian ethics, Christian principles and background. And I can see the result of it in your life. Now, tell us about those times when it was difficult. You were already committed to case, but we know that there's an enemy out there that goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may destroy. He wants to destroy our faith. Is there any certain scriptures that you held on to? My life scripture versus Romans eight twenty eight, and we know all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are called according to, to his purpose. Or is there a certain sermon or what? foundation kept you from uh, bailing out on your discipleship with the Lord Jesus Christ? What formula for success did you have for defending yourself against the attacks of the enemy? I have to say Philippians 4, 6, 7. Philippians 4, 6, 7 has got me through a lot, a lot. Um, there was a time where I was going through depression. And I know we don't like to talk about that, but listen, I'm going to, I need somebody to be free from it just like I was free from it. And Philippians okay. 4, 6, 7 says, be anxious for nothing, but in all nothing. things, for prayer, Uh-oh. supplication, and thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh, all mm-hmm. things, all things. All by things. prayer, supplication, right. and thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, Uh-oh. and the peace that surpasses mm-hmm. all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So yes, when Lord. I tell you, I would have some heart-to-heart talk with God. God, why is this happening? Mm-hmm. God, I, you know, I'm, yeah. you know, I do what I'm supposed to do. I'm living right, and mm-hmm. listen, I give mm-hmm. my tithes, Lord. I need you to, you know, I need Come on. you to. Multiply and I will tell uh, <laughs> I would tell uh, my kids, I would tell people around me, I said, Listen, you can say what you want. But when I say when when Joshua said, God, mm-hmm. I need the sun to stay in the sky, when I had twenty dollars mm-hmm. for the whole week, I would say, God, I need that gas hand to stay right there just like yeah, the yeah. sun stay in the sky for Joshua. But you need to know that word mm-hmm. so that you can speak it over your life. So I would have conversations with God. God, this is going on. God, this is that's going on. And I just need you to, mm-hmm. I need you to, uh, to, to make something happen. And mm. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I'm so grateful on this side through. I see how God was always, always working things out for me. Always working things out for yes. me. Yes. When I didn't yes. know. Um, I don't tell this story often, but, but one time, um, when my husband, he became blind. I think I mentioned this last time. He, he woke up blind one time in his right eye, and we were instantly mm. two incomes, one. And my income wasn't enough to take care of our family. And I was trying to figure out how mm. we were going to eat. Um, a co-worker out the blue said, hey, I have some extra food. Um, do you want it? She's like, I bought all this stuff, and I don't even know why. Do you want it? I'm like, I sure do. Wow. And she just gave me was a she gave me a, a cooler full of cookies and pizza. And Come on. So that week, <laughs> and I ate cookies and pizza. My family, 
and the kids, and I, you know, I had to make it interesting. Hey, y'all, we get to have pizza and cookies all week. Yay. What? They did not know that's yeah. all we had. Yeah. They did not know that's uh-huh. all we had until Friday. But when, when I tell you God <laughs> does things like that, he always does things like that. Uh, uh, recently, I was yeah, talking yeah. to God, and I've been saying, God, now, if you know my, what my heart's desire is, God. You know my heart's desire is to do this thing for you full time. I'm working a full time job, and I'm doing my music, you know, on the weekends, at night, after I make sure my family is okay. My dad uh, is a traveling yeah, veteran yeah. with us some time. My husband, you know, he... Um, he has uh, um, health issues, so I'm trying to make sure everyone is okay before I can get on my music. And I had fifty dollars left. And I went to I was sitting in the uh, grocery store program, and I said, God, I need you to uh, do something because I want. I know you gave mm. this town, and I know you didn't give it to me just to sit on it, and I know you didn't give it to me just to do it part time when I can get around to it. I need you to uh, send a financial blessing, my way. So I went in the program. Send it, Lord. And I was at the checkout, and I saw a man and a lady uh, 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 standing at, you know, in the front of the store, and I, I wasn't paying attention. And then right when I was getting ready to pay for my groceries, the lady walked up and said, "Ma'am, what's in your groceries?" The man back bagged the groceries and put them in the cart. And she said, well, we're taking certain people, whoever God leads us to, to pay for their groceries today. And she said, wow. do you have a you have a prayer for us? And I just started crying. I said, God, you are so awesome. Know. You know I just prayed I in the car before I got in it. So God showed me, don't worry about it. I'm going to work it out yeah. for you. And when I tell you he is doing it, he is doing it. And and." I, listen, when that thing finally happened, y'all better get out my way. This is going to be a shout. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be a shout. I see him, I see him moving. I see him moving. Yeah, little yeah, by yeah. little. Each situation, I see him moving. I see him moving. So I, I'm just grateful Amen. that we serve an awesome God that can see the, the beginning from the end and the end to the beginning and able to move us and, and put us in the, situ- in, in the position that we need to be. And for us to be ready, when God tells us, we yes, need to be setting on ready as a, as a mother of my church, you say, I'm setting on ready. Listen. Amen. <laughs> so we, uh, uh, we not, we talking about, I'm waiting on God. No, I'm not God waiting on you. So I'm going to be Come setting on. on ready and I'm getting in position. And for when that, when that thing happens. It's going to happen, right. and listen, when it happens, I want to come back on so I can tell the world I see it happening. Amen. God, we serve a God. Amen. Amen. Because I can go on. Amen. Go on. <laughs> Amen. Well, I appreciate you letting me jump in there because the word of God is a confirmation of what you just shared about, what you just testified about, woman of God. Amen. And it was in a recent Amen. Sunday school lesson that we just got through studying. I'm going to go Old Testament on you to show you that people are thinking that the Old Testament is outdated. No. The Old Testament just means it came before the New Testament. That's all. It's still the eternal, powerful Word of God that lives forever. Amen. Isaiah 65 and 24 says, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they Amen. are yet speaking, I will hear. Lord Jesus, the yes. thing just is flowing yes. all together because we just got through studying this lesson. And here's woman of God, Danielle Ray Thomas, testifying from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the prophet, letting us know that these words still ring true in 2023. And I believe, guess what? They're going to ring true all the way throughout eternity. And if you don't believe this, listen, here's woman of God named Ray Thomas singing about how she cried unto the Lord, and the Lord heard her. Amen. Yeah, Lord. There's nowhere to go Tired, frustrated From the life you're living Don't want to live this way no more You wonder how to 
You are listening to Fire, the gospel explosion where the praises are going up and the worries are going away. Playing for you the best and the newest gospel music on the planet and the most inspiring encouragement under God's heaven. Keep tuning in and bless your family, your friends, and your co-workers by telling them about Fire. Yes, indeed. We are fire, the gospel experience ministry on this gospel experience platform where we just are an evangelistic outreach ministry as we give God his just due praise and his just due 
glory right here, right now. This ministry broadcast is not just something that we do for performance. Woman of God, Nanny Ray Thomas, that get on stage and commit herself uh, to rehearsal and make the sacrifices that she has to make in her personal life and family life just so that we can be big shots and have a big name. No, the big name that we're interested in is God the Father, Jesus the Savior, Holy Spirit God. Other than that, anything else that comes our way is just a blessing on top of a blessing. You have just been taken behind the veil with my special guest, woman of God, gospel artist, singer-songwriter, Nanny Ray Thomas, talking about I cry. There's no shame in crying, woman of God, Nanny Ray Thomas. We cry when times are tough and kicking our behind. Why not cry those tears of joy when you just testified about how God will come in unexpectedly just so that everyone will know that it was not luck, it was not coincidence, you wasn't in the right place at the right time. No, God poured out his great mercy, and he saw your tears. Amen. Can you tell us a little bit about that song, the origin of it, the inspiration? Absolutely. Um, so that song I actually collaborated with a minister at my church, a minister, um, Brian Picard, and um, he gave me that song some time ago, uh, but I honestly, I couldn't deal with it for me. It was, it was, it was too emotional, um, mm. and I actually lost two cousins last year, like a month apart, brothers actually. Mm. And um, mm-hmm. also our church as a whole, we lost a young man um, in our church. Wow. And it made me, and I already knew, but sometimes until it affects you, you don't really think about, you know, the things you hear on the news, and, you know, how drugs just affects and just tears up families and alcohol and just all these things going on. And mm. that song, I had to go to a vulnerable place. Um, to sing mm. that song. When I was recording, I was literally crying and recording, singing that song. Wow. Um, and wow. Wow. the minister, um, he told us, actually, we had a concert. When I, this is actually uh, my CD. I released the CD last year. And when I did the CD release, he came up. I asked him to come up at the end so we can open the doors of church and everything. And he let us know that I Cry was a song he wrote um, because he was going to commit suicide. And it just made us think about all the things, you know, we just walk past things, we walk past people on the street, and you don't think about, that person is going through something, they don't want to be out there, you know what I mean? And we need to have compassion yes, I do. for people. That's somebody's son, that's somebody's daughter, that's somebody's mother, that's somebody's yeah, yeah. father out there. So, that I cry song is saying, I'm crying for you. You may, you know, you're not in the right mental place right now. You're you're struggling. You're confused. So I'm crying literal tears for you, but I'm crying out to God for you. So when we see people on the side, you know, when they ask you for a dollar or whatever, you know, if God mm-hmm, leaves mm-hmm. you, give that person a sandwich or whatever it is God leaves you to do, you make sure you give it to them, but you say a prayer for them. God, I'm lifting a prayer up for this person because anybody can be saved. Amen? Anybody can be saved. Amen. It's not for us to judge. It's not for us to determine. And so Amen. our job is to, to say a prayer for that person. Um, but yes, that man. was such a hard song. That was such a hard song because it made me yeah. vulnerable. And I had to mm. um, deal with those emotions you lose someone suddenly mm. it's hard to deal with those emotions and I had to deal mm-hmm. with those emotions and I put that emotion in that song because I want other people to you know people who have lost or dealing with uh, family members who are um, addicted to drugs to alcohol whatever it is they uh, we understand we're with you we're you know we're crying out to God with you but I, I want those people to know when you pass them on the street, let them know. And, you know, sometimes they not may not even want to hear it. When you say God loves you, they may not want to hear it. They're not in the right place right now. And that's okay. We give 
uh, we we say a prayer to God for them. Because it's say that one person praying another person water. You do your part. That's right. You do your part. That's right. And and God and get out the way and God let God do His part. So that mm. song uh, is is such a. Whew, it was such a hard song to do because, like I said, emotionally, um, I had to mm. put all of that hurt um, that I felt in that song uh, to convey the message. I wanted people to know: listen, pray for the people mm. um, around you. And listen, if you've never experienced drugs or alcohol, God bless you. That's not a reason for you to look Amen. down on anybody. Be grateful. That's true. Don't be judgmental. Amen. Be grateful. So Amen. let's stop. Let's stop looking down at people all the time. You be grateful. Be <laughs> thankful that that's Amen. not you. And say a prayer to somebody. Do what you can to help. Thank you. So that's the inspiration Amen. behind that song, I Cry. I, I I agree, woman of God, and I appreciate you saying that because as an individual myself that was tricked and deceived, that got seduced into drug, alcohol, and pornography addictions uh, from 1993 until 2001, my whole world was turned upside down because God would come in and fix a marriage that wind up eventually getting divorced. Uh, I was doing all the right things I thought that a good Christian should be doing. And like you, you say, God, why are these things still happening to me? But do you know, after the loss of all my material blessings, after losing a 15-year job at the post office in Detroit, Michigan, after going through drug rehab seven times at least over an eight-year period, I can testify that I don't even smell like smoke from coming out of that fiery furnace because, listen, woman of God, I pray, I pray to God the most heartfelt, the most deepest, the most sincerest prayer that I ever prayed when I was standing on that street corner in Detroit, Michigan, in Cass Quarter, 40 pounds underweight, didn't take a bath for 30 days, didn't, take, uh, didn't get a haircut for 30 days, was smelling like uh, roach-infested garbage. But do you know that I met God at a special place? To whereas I'm still on fire for the Lord for Amen. setting me free Amen. 20, 21, 21 years later. So you can't tell me what Amen. God won't do. I hear you, woman of Amen. God. Amen. 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 God is good. And God, God will is hear good. that and prayer. God. He will hear that humble prayer over he will yes. hear someone who's standing up in front of like the like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and oh God Amen. Father Amen. Amen. No, no, no. He don't need Amen. all of that. He needs your heart. He needs to hear your heart. Thank you. And if all you got is Lord help me. If that's all you got, Lord mm. help me. I can't help myself. Come he on. He will hear that prayer. He will hear your cry he hear it. and he will deliver you. Amen. 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 Just like the just just like the faith just like the faithful father of the prodigal son. He'll be standing there on the lookout waiting to hear that prayer to come yes. to our rescue. Because see, we have a God that don't just save our souls, but he cares about our everyday lives. He's not just trying to get us to right. heaven. That's he right. wants to have an intimate right. relationship with us now so that we can prepare to have this ongoing, eternal, intimate relationship with him mm-hmm. throughout mm-hmm. and beyond mm-hmm. the whole expanse of time. Amen. Woman of God, listen. Amen. This other while our listeners are enjoying this wonderful spiritual conversation as well as this Nanyere Thomas mini concert that we're having right here on Fire to Gospel Experience, talk about this song, Treasure, that we'll be playing before uh, you leave us. Talk about the treasure that is our yeah. God. Talk about our heart being that treasure that we eventually give to God as our greatest gift. Amen. Well, um, like I said, last year I released my first CD, and I was doing the music, and I'm like, God, I need, what's, what's going to be the title of this thing? And um, I am Godless, and God knows me. He created me. He knows everything about me. And God, I kept seeing one, two, three, four. Everywhere I went, when I looked at the clock, it was 12.34, a.m. or p.m., it was 12.34. Everywhere I go, I was to one, two, three, four. 
and I am a numbers <laughs> and pattern person. I'm, I, um, I have a degree yeah. in accounting, so I numbers, you know, okay. numbers, numbers intrigue me. And I kept seeing it over and over and over and over again. I said, okay, God, you're trying to get my attention. I said, if I see this one more time, I <laughs> yep. know this is you. I saw it one more time. So I said, okay, what, what could this be? There you I go. I said, okay, a scripture? So I literally went through the whole Bible, and I looked for chapter 12, verse 32. And there were only two verses, and I said, well, which one? Luke 12, 34. That's what it was. Um, and Luke 12, hmm. 12, 34, if you don't know what it is, it says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Hmm. And God said, okay, Beautiful. man, year. Now you said, now you wanted to sing for me, you wanted to live for me, am I your treasure? Uh oh. Are you uh-oh, making me uh-oh. your treasure? <laughs> I said, Oh, okay. He said, Well you, you're when you when you're supposed to be working on music, when you're supposed to be reading your Bible, when you're supposed to be spending time with me. Are you on your phone? Are you watching television? What are you doing? Am uh-oh. I your treasure? Uh-oh. You have to make me your mm. treasure. I said, Okay, God <laughs> I hear you. So yeah. that's where that song came from. God said, I, you know, I need you to be obedient. And I literally had to say Amen. that word obedient. And I, I, and I say that because we live in a world, in the country, in a Western thought where obedience is like a negative word. No, no, no. I need to be obedient <laughs> to what God has for me. So obedient. Come on. Are you spending your time with me? Are you reading your word? And like I mentioned earlier, the only way you can hide that word in your heart is if you know it. You don't have time That's right. when the enemy attacks you. You don't have time to go look for your Bible and look for a Bible verse. No, mm. you need to have that word in your heart. So in what your heart. 34, treasure, yes, that is where that song came from. God showed me because he knows who I am and he knows that I would see that and I would recognize that pattern. And he took me to that scripture. That became the title track of the CD. And the very first song you hear is Treasure, actually in the name of the CD, Treasure. Amen. That is wonderful, woman of God. And uh, I'm just excited now. i got to get a taste of this treasure. Woman of God, Nanny Eric Thomas. On fire.
My God, my God, sounds like my special guest, one we've got, Nanya Ray Thomas, talking about the treasure that is our heart. Amen goes right there. Woman of God, listen, you have been such a blessing to the body of Christ. I sincerely believe that our Father God up in heaven is looking down and smiling on you and saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Keep running for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm just going to speak that, and I'm not going to take it back, woman of God. Is there anything that's in your spirit that you maybe have been holding on to, woman of God, that you've been kind of mulling over in your own spirit and kind of keeping it to yourself, but really it's something that you almost had to bite your tongue just to keep from letting it out because you weren't sure about the place or the time. I would invite you now to let anything that's in your spirit that you've been holding on to that you'd like to share, to go ahead and share with the whole wide world right now on this Fire Gospel Experience? Um, absolutely. Uh, so I've been dealing with an injury for the past year, and my uh, ministry has been limited in where I could go. And, I'm, you know, I'm so glad, for, uh, grateful for the people that God put around me to, to encourage me. And I was apologizing Amen. to someone um, uh, not about being not being able to physically make it to an event, and I literally wrote down her words. She said, "Never apologize yeah. for the direction God is moving you in." And then she said, "You know, help me research, but I don't think any of biblical prophecies were written with an apology." I said, "All right, now I sat up straight." <laughs> and she, and she said that, what? and um, yeah. that was Pastor Natalie Peggy. I'm not going to try to take credit for that. And I was on a Zoom call yesterday and uh-huh. you know uh, uh, Dr. Gerald Gates because you know something I mm-hmm. have to wait I can't do this I have to wait for the next one and he said uh, while you are waiting do what waiters do and serve I said okay God okay so okay okay I, said, I, I needed, like I that getting frustrated but I said I need to get back on track because what the, the scripture that I've been All thinking right. about is our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask yes. or imagine. So I'm on. standing Speaking. on Ephesians 3.20 because I know God is continually and going to continue to do uh, things exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or imagine. And I say, God, I'm just living in exceedingly abundantly. That's where I want to reside, I love exceedingly it. abundantly. Because you already know um, um, uh, you trust me with the music you give because I'm going to give it the same way you gave it to me. So somebody's going to be blessed mm. by it. Somebody's going to be encouraged. Somebody's going to be delivered by it. So I'm right. living right. in exceedingly abundantly. God, exceedingly abundantly. Whatever it is, I'm going to live exceedingly abundantly. Whatever that means for me to do, for me to get in position, exceedingly abundantly. So that's where I've been residing Amen. in my mind and I've been praying and just is meditating on Ephesians 3.20. Amen. Listen, listen. 
You gospel artists with y'all sanctified and anointed selves give y'all so, so much additional credibility. When you come onto these platforms and we allow you the freedom to testify and speak, and then you have the beautiful nerve to bring them scriptures with you, girl. You go ahead and keep on quoting them scriptures so that these people recognize that the woman of God that's singing God's praises, the man of God that's singing God's praises, is fully equipped as a disciple of Jesus Christ. That means when you lay the microphone down, you step away from the stages and the platforms and the pulpits and the choir rehearsals, yeah. you are personally yeah. responsible and prepared to testify the gospel message, yeah. the death, burial, the life and the resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ because there's so much nonsense out there that has the nerve to oppose our Jesus the Christ. They're trying to make it a white man's religion. I've even heard some bold, ridiculous stuff now where they even say that maybe they got the roles reversed, that Jesus wasn't the hero that we think he is, that actually Satan is the hero. So we need to be more upfront. We need to be bold in our faith and take a stand against this ridiculous nonsense blasphemies against our God, against our Christ, and against the Word of God. So woman of God, listen, you keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to hold you up in prayer. I'm going to continue to play your music. When you get new music, send it to me. Whenever I play your music, I'll be sure and send you the archive. You don't even have to be my special guest. I just want you to know that I'm a kingdom collaborator. This is my ministry. This is what I do. Now, would you please be so kind to share with the listening audience how they can continue to support you on social media, how they can continue to get in touch with you for booking reservations, so that you can come and minister to their church, to their event, and then find a where your music can be downloaded. Yes, sir. Um, so if you want to contact me for booking, you can email me at nanyearmusic at gmail.com, nanyearmusic at gmail.com. That is spelled N-A-N-E-Y-E-R-E music at gmail.com. That is also my handle for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, if you would like to support me, my music is on all digital platforms. Amen, amen. See, that's what I'm talking about. A woman of God that is fully prepared, fully equipped, she's not letting life circumstances, she's not letting any physical limitations get in the way because she already testified. Now, she said in the beginning of this interview, she said nothing. And I don't know if y'all noticed, but I heard her go up a couple octaves. She's a singer. She, was, she don't just sing in different bravados and different octaves and tones. When she said nothing, she went up about two notes. I think it was B flat. And then she just <laughs> let you know that that spirit, that spirit that's in her to sing is in her to yes. live for Christ, is in her to testify about Christ, because that's what it's all about. We commit mind, body, and spirit, soul, to yes. our discipleship yes. in Jesus Christ. Anything less than that, you need to step your game up, sir. You need to step your game up, ma'am, because this mm -hmm. is not a game. We are warriors for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said that yes. I have fought the good fight of faith. So, woman mm -hmm. of God, I'm going to pray for you as you continue to fight the good fight of faith. If there's anything that I can do on my end, please get in touch with me. Let me know. I'm a kingdom collaborator. This is what I do. I'm not just saying this. If you think of playing, try me. You'll see for yourself. Amen. 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 You telling the truth? <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Woman of God, man, you yeah, Ray Thomas. If I take too long to invite you back, you get touch with me and say, Brother Ron, I got that fire burning, and I need to come back and talk to you and your listening audience, and I'll be more than happy to have you come back, Woman of God. Thank you for joining us. God bless you and keep you is my prayer, and keep you forever moving forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Woman of God, gospel artist, singer, songwriter, and minister, as God moves in her spirit. Now, yeah, Ray Thomas was here on the side of God's spirit.
Lord have mercy. Didn't that woman of God just move in your spirit and just bless you with her music ministry? And then she came back and backed it all up with some strong testimony, some real life circumstances. She told you she been through some things, some things that had her in tears. But don't you know we have a God that is. The Bible says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. That's Hebrews 4 and 15. We don't be making stuff up. We give you eternal word that comes from the very mind of God himself. He wrote it down so we can read it in a book and then reread it and then read it again and then meditate on that word so that it can be digested. He told the prophet Jeremiah, he said, eat this word. That means get it down deep in your soul. You're tuned in to fire, 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 the gospel experience. We about to turn up the heat with woman of God, Shonda Ingram, because she going to tell you we ain't worried about nothing. As long as we know that we've got God on our side and that God is on our side and we are on God's side, we are going to keep going on. And ain't nothing, no devil in hell, no life circumstances is going to stop us, turn us around, or get in our way. Hallelujah.
Jesus. <laughs> we have a church up in here. Up in here. Shout to English. I'm telling you, man, I interviewed that young lady, and I swear I was so upset with myself. I said, Lord Jesus, why did it take me so long to bring that woman of God? She just tore up my whole studio, y'all. Shout to English. Thank you, woman of God, for going on and encouraging us to go on as well. This is the hour of power. <laughs> this is the time and segment of Fire the Gospel Experience where I take this artist spotlight and then I shine it on your ministry. I shine it on your gift. I shine it on your anointing so that you can go beyond what is already known about you. The Bible says our Lord Jesus said don't make a move until you receive power from Holy Spirit God. Once you receive power, don't be standing around, which we're going to talk about from Acts 1 11. Don't be standing around. Take that anointing and that message of the gospel into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. You notice how those locations extended out further and further? That's what this platform and others like it is. We want you to come and bring your anointed selves to this platform. Shine brighter than you've ever shined before for the glory of God and move further out in your ministry labor. And that's what this Shine Artist Spotlight is. I have an amazing man of God here. <laughs> I was just talking to him. I said, Lord Jesus, I don't know why it took me all these years to bring this man of God to this fire. I got so scared. But don't you know, everything happens in just the right time. Don't you know that there's nothing that is missed or misplaced when we're talking about God's timing for us to do whatever it is he called us to do. So I'm just letting y'all know, this man of God is taking the gospel message to the streets. <laughs> he ain't scared because he grew up, you know what I'm saying? We, we just urban. Some of us are just those urban disciples of Christ. I ran the streets of Detroit for four decades. I'm a little green here, country boy from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, but they took me to Detroit when I was six years old. Came back 40 years later. I'm here broadcasting in my birthplace now, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. But I spent four decades running up and down the streets of Detroit. So we know what it's like out there in the streets. And see, God uses people such as myself. They've been in the streets, that ain't scared, and they know how to show up and show out. Like my special guest for shining out the spotlight, man of God. Bertrand McKinney in the house. Y'all. All in, no doubt. Big guy, no doubt. Follow him, that route. I'm all in, no doubt. Big guy, no doubt. Follow him, that route. Tell your problem, nigga, back out. God, he gon' show up and show out. God, he gon' show up and show out. God, he gon' show up and show out. My God, he gon' show up and show out. I'm all in, so down. We got no doubt. Follow him, that route. Tell your problem, nigga, back out. God, he gon' show up and show out. God, he gon' show up and show out. God, he gon' show up and show out. My God, he gon' show up and show out. Now hold on, let me testify. I speak the truth and won't tell a lie. No cap, yeah, it's all back. My God, he's all that. I called out and he called back. Took the lead so I could fall back. Follow him's the only option. Straight forward, no stopping. The enemy's watching. Roaming the earth like a lion, he roaring. Roaring, has nothing for me. Spreading my wings like an eagle, I'm soaring. Soaring. Hover above them. No weapon form to get me will prosper. None. With angels on deck. In my time, I need to scream. I got you. High. Holy Ghost on the roster. Right. Real deal, no imposter. No imposter. Shoot the shot and let it block you. Yeah. And your track, it gon' stop you. <laughs> got your back, he gon' watch you. Yeah. Hard to crack like a lobster. It's a fact that can't top ya. Like that, they wanna knock ya. Off of the path that you on, but the path that you on is the order they chosen. See, you got God on your side, and with God on your side, man, you gotta keep going. So many doors here is open. Not a person on earth that can close them. Put the fix everything that is broken. Just believe in this word and keep hoping. I'm all in, so doubt. We got no doubt. Follow him, that route. Tell your problem, nigga, back out. God, he gon' show up and show out. God, he gon' show up and show out. God ain't gon' show up and show out. My God ain't gon' show up and show out. I'm all in, so down. We ain't got no doubt. Follow him, that route. Tell your problem, nigga, back out. God ain't gon' show up and show out. God ain't gon' show up and show out. God ain't gon' show up and show out. My God ain't gon' show up and show out. In your time of need when you need him. Heart full of pain and you grieving. Grim's not around and he leaving. Insomnia, no sleeping. 
Alcohol can't stop drinking. Pop a couple pills, now you're tweaking. Suicide thoughts got you thinking. Close to the edge and the deep end. Give it to the Lord, take a little faith. Trust in His word and it keeps straight. Right by your side when the people hate. All you gotta do is see His face. God type of love can't be replaced. The Lord's so good, don't get a taste. Who when you're so on your dinner plate. Eat it all up, no time to wait. Death ain't let it die, death. Deadly kill, die, flesh. Have God, so why stress? Tell yourself that I'm blessed. Yes, blessed with no sneeze. Praise Him on both knees. Hands raised, give us hope, please. Deliver us from our enemies. He gonna show out, he gonna show up. Blessings come down, my praises go up. Close to the king, I'm raising my cup. Say it again. He gonna show out, he gonna show up. Blessings come down, when praises go up. Close to the king, I'm raising my cup. I'm all in, so doubt. We ain't got no doubt. Follow him, that route. Tell your problem, nigga, back out. God, he gonna show up and show out. God, he gonna show up and show out. God, he gon' show up and show out. My God, he gon' show up and show out. I'm all in, so out. We ain't got no doubt. Follow him, that route. Tell your problem, nigga, back out. God, he gon' show up and show out. God, he gon' show up and show out. God, he gon' show up and show out. My God, he gon' show up and show out. Man of God, man of God. <laughs> Bertrand McKinney. Old boy from Tyler Town, Mississippi, from the Dirty South. We cleaning up the Dirty South with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is now a resident in Louisville, Kentucky. He's down there where the folks is running derbies and carrying on. But listen, artist of Fresh Start Recording and Entertainment, music group member, God first, always. He'll let you know, let you know, but I'm going to let him let you know for himself on this fire gospel experience, man of God. Bertrand McKinney is here, y'all, and I'm telling y'all, y'all like that front, that front line groove that he just took us to, talking about show up and show up. I can't wait for this man of God to help us understand how he is going to let God show up and show out in his life, because I am sure that he has a testimony that's going to be a blessing to you, you, and yes, I'm talking to you too. Man of God, in my shine artist spotlight, Bertrand McKinney is here. To bless us, y'all. That's it. That's it. All right. Thank you. What? Thank you. What? How you doing, man of God? You, you, I'm blessed, man. Listen, I already told you that I would complain, but I'd be lying. So I ain't going to even go there with that. Uh, <laughs> you just showed out. You you just showed out on that one right there. I like that theme. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then I need for you to tell me the inspiration about show up and show out because – we need to let people know that just because we are Christian believers, we are not doormats. We are not meek and lowly. We know how to defend ourselves. We ain't soft. We ain't no cupcake. Yes, we, ain't no we, just acknowledge, we just acknowledge the fact that God is a reality in our lives, and we ain't necessarily trying to prove ourselves to nobody but God. Everybody else is just going to be a witness. Tell us about yourself. Why did you decide to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, man of God? Tell us, tell us. Oh man! Well, first of all, thank you, uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate the opportunity. It is a blessing to be able to yes, talk sir. to you right now. So, a um, little bit about myself. Yes, my name yes, is Bertrand McKinney. For those that didn't catch it, um, from a little place called Tylertown, Mississippi, a little small place. And man of God, growing up, um, man, my mother Woo! kept me in church. Woo! You know, she kept me in okay, church. Good. The church doors was open. Good. I was there. Good. So, um, you Good. know, that, and I always had a love for music. I, at a young age, I fell in love with hip-hop. And once I um, mm-hmm. learned that, you know, I knew how to rap or whatever, it just made sense to mm-hmm. take my music and want to uplift God with it. You know, so that's, that's how that came Amen. about, me doing the gospel hip-hop. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Hey, man, well, listen, shout out and big ups to mama for keeping your same sanctified self in church until that root <laughs> yes, of sir. faith was able to grab hold of Jesus himself. Thank you, mother. Thank you for all of you mothers out there that's raising little hard head boys like me and man of God, Bertrand McKinney. We thank y'all. We fought y'all. We had attitudes Absolutely. while y'all was dragging us in church. But y'all had a purpose and a plan and the old folks say you have to bend the tree while it's green. And we glad that y'all took us to the place that we thought we didn't want to go. We wouldn't want to be nowhere else right now. Man of God, can you share with us how gospel music 
has been so pervasive throughout all the different genres because some people are still under the impression, and I understand their concern, they don't want the church turned into the club. We're not going to let that happen. But we can't right. dismiss the powerful impact that gospel rap music is having just like any other form of gospel music. Talk about that, man of God. Absolutely. Um, well, you know, I mean, first of all, you know, God isn't a, he isn't a stagnant God. He's forever moving, you know, so times are forever yeah. changing. And if you turn, man of God, if you turn your radio on right now to any secular station, you're not going to hear mm-hmm. music, you know, that sounded like the 60s or the 70s. I mean, the type of nope. music that I'm doing is the type of music that you hear. And I just want to be able to contribute to us taking music back, like to, to winning souls. So I, I use it like this. If you're in a foreign country, right, and you don't speak the language mm-hmm. over there, it's going to be hard for you to communicate. So with music, right. it's the same thing. I'm just communicating from the type of music that people are accustomed to listening to right now. So I just try to spread God's mm-hmm. word and his message, put a positive spin on it, and, you know, bless as many as I can. Amen. Amen. Well, you're doing the right thing because somewhere in the book of Acts, when the apostle Paul was waiting on his other disciples to arrive in Greece, he was at the area of this hill where all of the mental giants of that time and all the philosophers and all the theologians would meet and they would debate and argue. And Paul said, I've noticed that you all have a statue dedicated to the unknown God. Now, Paul said, let me introduce you to this unknown God, because by your own admission, by the subscription, you don't even know who this God is. I'm here to introduce you. And the Bible declares he spoke in a language where they could understand him. Amen. Amen. And the beautiful thing about it, the beautiful thing about it is he didn't try to beat them up with no scriptures or try to use heavy-handed tactics to make them feel guilty. He just spoke as he was led by Holy Spirit God. I'm sharing something, man of God. And then he let yes, Holy sir. Spirit God do the work. And the Bible declares that after the meeting, some said this man is speaking good. Some said, man, he is beside himself. And some people said, we'll hear about this matter later. But there were some that came to Paul privately. After the meeting was shut down and Paul was able then to go further and expound on deeper truth to what he just got through sharing to the crowd. See, God wants us to just be a vessel and let Holy Spirit God do the work. Amen. And I see you doing that, man, God, because this first song, this first song got me. Show up and show out. (laughs) What would you say the body of Christ is, is in need of? to help us show up and show out more effectively in presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. What, what, what would you advise us to maybe apply better or more so that the world can see that Jesus Christ is the only Savior of this whole wide world and that he's alive right now in heaven? They still don't believe that. Yeah, we need to, um, we need to respect him more, like put, put some respect on his name. I think people have really forgotten okay. just exactly who it is that we are serving and who it is that we're believing mm-hmm. in, you know, um, and God yeah. is all powerful, almighty, and there is nothing that he can't do. So the, the thought behind the song, you know, when I'm saying God is going to show up and show out, that's what he does. Like mm-hmm. in your experiences when you really need him and it looks like it's just so bleak and gloomy, God, he shows up and not only mm-hmm. do he show up, he show out. You know, so I encourage anyone just have faith in have faith in him and understand exactly who it is that we're dealing with. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I really you know what I really enjoyed, man of God Bertrand McKinney. What's that, I love sir? when there's a situation that just just confounds everybody. No one has answers, no one has a solution. Every which way they <laughs> turn is nothing but more question is more questions than answers. And then all of a sudden God steps in and then the remedy is there all of a sudden. And God exactly. said, look, there is no human situation that I don't already have a multitude of remedies for that I can just Come on, bro. and Come reach on. out. And see, we, Come we, on. we don't, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. We need a much greater respect for who God is. But see, listen, we're not going to get to it. Uh, it's not sexually transmitted. And we're not going to get it just by rubbing elbows with certain people. What we need to do, man of God, is we need to be more dedicated to studying the word of God, 
And if you read the Christian Bible, when the when the Bible says Adam knew Eve, that means he made the most intimate sexual contact, mind, body, and spirit with his wife Eve. God wants Absolutely. to have that same mind, body, and spirit intimacy so that now he can fill up this empty cup that we are and overflow. And then people will see miracles happen in our lives, and they'll know Ooh. that that must be a God. Amen. Amen. You Amen. Right, man, man of God, listen. Yes, sir. You, 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 you got this fire and brimstone going in your life. Talk about the creation <laughs> of your new project, your new project, Fire and Brimstone. Tell us about it. Yes, sir. The, the new single is called Fire and Brimstone. It came out about a month and a half ago. And, and there's a saying that people use uh, nowadays, and you hear it a lot. They, they talk about bring the smoke. So I was thinking about that when, uh, when God gave me the words to the song. And I'm like, okay, then, if you want smoke, then you got smoke. It's only popping every time God gets provoked. So I'm basically saying, hey, Fire and Brimstone, we're about to turn it up, but we're turning it up in Jesus' name. We're turning it up in God's name. Right. It's about to get hot. Yes, yes sir. Amen. That's what I'm talking about right there. And uh, I love uh, how you are just uh, not shy at all about your presentation of Jesus Christ. And see, that lets you know right there that God has done some amazing things in your life because you don't just be on fire for God and uh, take him casual. When you have this great enthusiasm for God, God has done some miraculous things, has moved some things that we could not yes. figure out. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about fire and brimstone. That means God is going to show up and show out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back so that we'll have more time to chop it up and talk about the good things of God. 
that God has done for our, our lives and then this gospel message. And then I want you to share a little bit more about your life story because I already know God has done great things for you. And I promise you, when you share your testimony and your life story, it's going to tell somebody listening to the Fire Gospel Experience broadcast, and it's going to make a difference in your life. Keep living for God. Keep God first. Absolutely. And make sure that you stay in his word, stay in his presence. And I promise you, everything that God has already destined and prepared for you to receive is just waiting on you to walk through that door. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate you. Amen. Listen, I appreciate you, man of God. And I appreciate it if you would just share your contact information because there are going to be preachers, pastors, there are going to be concert promoters that are going to hear this broadcast and they're going to want Bertrand McKinney to be a part of their gospel celebration. How can you be reached for contact? Um, where are you on social media, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever you got going for my uh, listeners to okay. support you on social media? And then where can your music be downloaded? Because that's what's up. All right. So social media, Facebook, Instagram is Bertrand McKinney. Um, that's B E R T R A N D McKinney. That's Facebook, Instagram, as well as TikTok. You can find me there, uh, Bertrand McKinney. Then um, my Facebook music page is Birdie Music, and my YouTube page is Birdie Music, as well as Twitter, Birdie Music. So um, yeah, if you're looking for me, you can you can reach me up. you can reach me on any one of those sites, or you can email me at Bertrand McKinney at gmail dot com. And then as far as my music, it's everywhere. All you have to do is go wherever you stream your music. Type in Bertrand McKinney and my music will pop up. That man said his music is everywhere. Now, see, that's a hardworking man of God right there. When he can just <laughs> politely let you know that if you want to find my music, all you have to do is just turn around because it'll be right there waiting on you. Man of God, listen, we appreciate you, man of God. I'm looking forward to yes, God sir. doing newer things in your ministry and in your life. And please feel free to... Uh, let me be a part of your kingdom work. I look for kingdom collaborations every time I have you special guests on the show. I'm looking forward to building relationships so that God can get greater impact from your ministry as well as mine because we can be so much more effective when we work together, man of God. And there's one thing else that I want the listeners to know, that where there's smoke, there's always fire. Man of God, bless you. Yes, sir. Hey. God hey. bless you, man of God. I appreciate you. Virtual material, y'all, is not shining out of spotlight. Amen. It goes right there, y'all. Amen. 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 I like how that brother just came in and just did the work, and he just said, let me just get on up out of here because I got other things to do. He's probably going back to the lab right now, that prayer closet, that music laboratory, and watch Holy Spirit God come out and give him new inspiration, new music. New enthusiasm, because, see, we out here laboring, y'all. We're not just out here just trying to uh, be seen. No, what we want to do, y'all, is we want God to be seen in us, because we are just happy to be called a vessel, to be called a chosen one, to be called a disciple of God. See, that's reward enough right there. Anything else is extra, and, yes, everyone should be recognized. Everyone should be acknowledged. Everyone should be are rewarded for who they are in God. But our first priority is to seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all those other things we know, trust, and believe will be added on to it. Amen goes right there. You tuned in to fire, 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 the gospel experience. We are so blessed to have you here. We're going to be talking about Still standing from Acts 1 and verse 11. So we want y'all to just do like man of God, Gerard Mitchell, is about to share with y'all. No matter what, don't you dare give up. Don't do it. I know times are tough right now. With long food lines, sickness and disease abound. But God told me to tell you this. It's not time to give up. Just hold on and hold out. For God's word is a comforter. God is our refuge and strength. His very presence helps in trouble. 
Just hold on. Come on, just begin to worship God in this place. Come on, begin to honor Him. Come on, Lady Walker. Remember God is on your side. Now come on, just lift your hands in the air. And say, God, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to throw it in the towel. So come on, quiet, but don't give up. Don't give up. In this place, come on, Miss Sandra, through all your ups and downs. All your ups and your downs. Seems like no one. Seems like no one's around. Felt like you just can't go on. And there's no one to call on. Come on, everyone, lift your voice. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't you dare give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't you give yeah. in. Stand on his word. You gotta stand on his God word. God will see you through. God will see you through. Yes, he will. Don't give up. Come on, don't you dare give don't in. Don't Remember this, you just got to hold on to God's unchanged hand. Just say, hold on. Hold on. Don't you dare give up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He's right there for you. Hold on.
Well, hello. I am Prophetess Mia Gatson Mason, and you are listening to Fire, the gospel experience where the fire is a moving, uplifting, unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music. I pray that my ministry, Raw Ministries at 2659 Pike Avenue, North Little Rock, Arkansas, will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Keep it tuned in and bless your family and friends and co-workers by telling them about fire on this station. It's all about kingdom building. Don't you know that? Don't you know it's all about kingdom building? Thank you, woman of God. Mia Gatson, we are looking forward to having you come and be a part of our fire gospel experience. As soon as your busy schedule allows it, we are just forward to having all of the beautiful people of God come into this gospel experience and share your testimony and let the world know that we are the light of the world because the light is Jesus Christ shining bright through mm-hmm. us. What a wonderful, blessed privilege that is. We are embracing for your spiritual supplement and for your sanctified consideration from the book of Acts, the first chapter Verse 11, talking about still standing, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. It goes right there. How about that? Mm. Well, we all know the saying of, how I'm just waiting on the Lord, behind that very fine spiritual presentation, what is the true substance of that meaning? Is it just a stagnant cover-up for our current passivity? Or are we truly in the depths of a quandary that we cannot see the right avenues to pursue? Like the disciples of our Lord Jesus in our scripture lesson today, After three years of tutorial discipleship of walking, talking, and having exclusively first-handed exposure and demonstration of his divine holiness, talking about our Lord Jesus, and power, our Lord Jesus has completed his earthly ministry assignment. Now was the time for his ascension to depart back to his heavenly throne with our Father God. Amen. Yeah, he had been telling them, look, I'm not going to always be here, but I need you all to carry on. And that's the same message that he has given us today. We need to be about the business of carrying the gospel message of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to go to Acts 1, verse 6, where it said, Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Acts 1 and 7 says, he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or date. The Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, while the Lord's disciples were attempting their best, to chart their future path and direction, our Lord Jesus redirected them and us today also into which way to go. First of all would be the way of knowledge. Our Lord Jesus will qualify the call, as the modern day saying goes. The knowledge that whatever is needed for us that our God has destined and purpose to provide to us. We need to rest assured that he talking about God does indeed and will empower us to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or think as the scripture says in Ephesians 3 and 20. Are we guilty Hmm. of patiently procrastinating and using our lack of stimulated motivation and then have the nerve to put the blame respectfully on God? Now listen, I do agree that there are definite advantages to being still, to wait for divine infusion, to fill us as once again, Holy Spirit God infuses us. But standing still and being still are two entirely different states of being. To wit, that staying still will eventually lead to us being stale, spiritually speaking. And when the open door of to staying still can very likely turn into a spiritual stagnation. 
Verse 9 of Acts 1 says, After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Verse 10 says, They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. This is a very purposeful design of God's plan in our discipleship congregation, where streams of spiritual alliances are created for our good, our growth, our development, and our maturity. But, you know, we can at times sometimes be a little bit thin-skinned that we may not even recognize when someone comes to us with a helpful critique or our supplemental discernment to grow by and raise our unwanted guard before receiving the nutritional insight intended for our good. That's what we do. We'll raise it. We'll raise it. We'll lift that guard up in no time and miss the nutritional insight that was intended for our good. Now, we want all of our beneficiary blessings to come in our ideal packaging where the tone, time, and temperament are all in our favorite personal flavors. We're talking about still standing and the attitude that we must take as the people of God so that we could be that force for God and for good. Amen goes right there. You tuned in to Fire the Gospel Experience. Yes, indeed. God, you are so good, and we bless you. We lift you up in high praise. We want you to be the center of our joy. Lord Jesus, we don't ever want to let the past hold us down, so let the ministry of woman of God, Charlotte Williams, help us to forget about the past. Help us, dear sisters. Help us, brothers. Help us to keep alive. Taking one step back So you gotta read 
Hello, I am Dorian Marie, songwriter, clothing line proprietor, and entrepreneur, speaker, author, and music artist. I would encourage everyone to get a copy of my books, Finish It, and Let's Talk It Out, where I share my intimate lessons learned in love, music, and my faith. My books may be purchased at IamDorian.com. They are available in ebook and audio format through Amazon and various online platforms. Keep it tuned in to Fire the Gospel Experience, which will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Amen, amen. Thank you, woman of God, Doria Marie. Appreciate your ministry and your faithful stand in Christ Jesus. Amen. Goes right there. You all just heard from woman of God, Charlotte Williams, talking about forget the past. But that stuff goes. The devil just wants us to feel miserable and guilty, carry shame and guilt, which is almost an offense to the redemptive work and the grace of God that said that I will remove your sins Away from you, I will remember no more as far as the east is from the west. So we need to let it go, too. And it may take time. It may be processed. And I'm sure there is a healing in the letting go of some of those heavy burdens that we carried around with the amen goes right there. We are tuned in to Acts, the first chapter, verse 11. We're still talking about still standing. Amen goes like that. And when we left off before the music break, you know, it's true. We want all of our ministry blessings to come in our ideal packages where the tone of somebody speaking to us, the time somebody speaking to us, and the temperament that we may be in ourselves all has to come in our own favorite flavors. Y'all know how we are. We are a little bit spoiled. I guess you could say cuddle, but it's all good. We grow up, and then we do grow out of those things. Bruce 10 says they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Verse 11, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, this same Jesus, this same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go up into heaven. So, as did the two men dressed in white, speaking with the Lord's disciples. Are we still standing, still, with no obligation, no interest, no enthusiasm, and no objective in sight, while staring aimlessly into a past that has come and gone? And now it is our time to take the knowledge of what was, and build on that foundational layers for what is still yet to come. Let these words I pray from the two men dressed in white revive our sense of spiritual fortitude. Acts 1 and 11b. The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Let us as born again believers in the Lord Jesus the Christ be about the intent for business of kingdom building until the day of his return with no idol standing still with our very best sanctified faces, postures, and positions. Let's get moving for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And amen flows right there. I want to thank my special guest. Oh, my God. You're talking about a woman of God that just came in and blessed us. Nan Yere Thomas, bless you, woman of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being such an amazing woman of God. Amazing anointed gospel music. I pray the Lord will continue to bless you, fill your cup till it just runs over and just blesses everybody that comes into your atmosphere. Thank you, man of God, Bertrand McKinney, for your strong stance representing man of God, representing men of God, just like we're supposed to, taking that gospel message to here, there, and everywhere with no shame. I'm praying for both of y'all strength and courage and faithfulness unto our God. I want to leave you with one final word. Wisdom will have us move away from where there is no peace to keep our peace. That's what wisdom does. Don't sit around and let chaos create an atmosphere that just ruins your state of mind, your state of being, and your spiritual perception. God wants you to be fit, old, and complete for is later. So until next time, y'all be blessed. I will fellowship with you on the next 
fire. If that's what experience, feel free to keep me in your prayer because I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to bless you in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. Until then, I pray that your cup be filled. I pray that your spirit be renewed and refreshed, that your mind will be open to all of the good things that God has prepared for you to do great and mighty things that you do not. I leave you with man of God, Bishop Dan Willis, and ANC, All Nations Choir, as we close out respectfully giving God praise. So until next time, y'all praise him, because that's what we're about to do right here, right now. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Live from the world headquarters of the Lighthouse Church in Chicago, please put your hands together and give a Chicago welcome to our very own.